created Re Interactive three years ago, mid 2010, um, with a credit card that had about a $1,000 left on it. And I decided that's fine, we'll make it work. And uh, we started doing a lot of promotion and telling people about it. And I got my first job helping documents and stuff in Rails. Um, I sat down and I wrote the mail gen, which you'll use in your Rails work. I don't know if you've done anything on email yet. You will soon, I'm sure. It's a pretty core cool component of Rails. Um, so I sat down before I started my own consultancy and I thought, I really need to learn how to write Ruby code. So I decided to write an email handling library. And I thought, how hard could that be? I mean, it's two from CC and a subject of the body back. I mean, that's pretty simple. Anyway, there's 22 RFCs that cover how you handle email. And the document length, if you printed it out on paper, goes from here to the floor. Um, and that sort of blew me away. So my one month project of making an email library turned into about a nine month project. Anyway, we got it done, or I got it done. Then I got that merged into Rails um, to replace the way Rails currently does email handling. And since then, that mail library has been downloaded 23 million times, and I'm trying to find a way to get a dollar from each of those people. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I got into Ruby, um, which is actually quite interesting because the way I got into Ruby and became successful with Ruby, if you like, is by doing open source work, right? I found a problem that everyone was having, and the problem was that the previous mail library that people were using was called Tmail, and that was good. I mean, it worked. But the thing is that the way spammers get email through mail systems is by running the email in such a way that the computer can't understand it. And part of the RFCs for email, request for comment, it's like an internet thing that says this is how you should do something. The RFC for email said, if you can't understand a mail message or if there's something about it you don't get, you have to pass it through, right? And that stops some new feature that some email companies started providing breaking email everywhere, like it makes sense, right? You know, if, if Microsoft released a feature in mail which gives you a ready response or something, and my, my mail server doesn't understand how to do that, my mail server shouldn't crash. It should just ignore it and let it go, right? The problem was Tmail crashed whenever it hit an email I couldn't get. So um, there was a funny person who's quite well known in the Rails community, and he actually said that Tmail is a really good spam filter because all you have to do is read the email and if it crashes, you know, it's spam, you just delete it, right? Anyway, I was using Tmail for a really large mail project that I was doing with Ruby, and we implemented that feature, and the problem was that every email that came from any Microsoft system got deleted because it thought it was spam. Maybe true, but anyway. Um, so I had to solve it, so I wrote mail. And there wasn't anything out there that solved it. Um, I couldn't fix Tmail because it was too structured in the way it was, so I learned Ruby and I wrote the mail handling library and it took months, but it worked. And because I went out there and I just started publishing the code and people started using it and I started getting this positive feedback, I just kept learning Ruby. And um, at the same time I was writing a little Rails application on the side in Rails 0 0.9 or something, just learning Rails as I went. And soon enough, I went, hey, I know enough about this to do it as a project. So I contacted a few people that had told me that they really liked my work on the mail library and said, hey, do you know you want to have a job? And one of them said, yes, I do. Actually, we want to pay you to help document the Ruby on Rails stack, like the library. And I went, sweet. So then I went and did that. So I'm getting paid to do open source work now. Awesome. Wasn't actually programming, but it was documenting. And documenting a program is actually a really good way to learn how to write a program because you have to read the program. And reading code is the fastest way to learn how to write code. And I'm not talking about reading, just looking at it going, oh, that's interesting. I'm talking about going, how the hell does that work? You know? And if you want to really screw with your brain, go read how Rails active record works or something. Just try and follow the line through from the start of finish. You know, maybe not right now, if you're at the start of course. But towards the end, just open up the library and have a look. And you'll be able to figure it out and you'll figure it out and you'll become a better Ruby person. The reason I'm telling you this as a beginning is that our community for Ruby on Rails, is, or Rails or Ruby, sort of the same community, is very much focused on just come and help, just come and try, give it a shot. And if you're giving something a shot and you're trying to make something better, you'll be deified, like made out to be like a god in our community. Um, people will love you, they'll talk to you, you'll get opportunities, you'll find it very easy to get work, all that sort of stuff. 
and it doesn't have to be much. You don't have to sit down and write a mail out. In fact, don't. <laughs> it, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Um, but you know, even just getting on and documenting, like say you're using a gem. You know about gems? How many? How, how far are we? Pretty good. Oh, good. Fine. So you know about gems and the gem files and all that. So you might be using a gem in a certain way and you can't figure out how to use it and you have to read the documentation two or three times to understand it. Well, instead of just going, oh, I figured it out and moving on, go to GitHub and learn how to do a pull request and submit a patch to that author and say, look, this documentation's a bit sparse. I've added this much documentation to really explain it. And if you send that through to the author, they'll check it, make sure it's correct, and then they'll publish it. And bam, you're now a published Ruby author and you have contributed to the betterment of all Ruby programs worldwide. And you will find, you will not find an author of a gem who will reject the documentation pull request. We love it. Because documentation is usually the last thing you do. So, you know, and that's a great way to learn how to do pull requests and get code approved into open source projects. And it's very, very low risk, right? And it's very low risk on rejection as well, because it doesn't matter how simple the change was, even if you're fixing a typo, you know, I noticed you can end any of your sentences with a full stop and I fix that and guess the fix. Awesome! It means I don't have to do it, you know? And really, it's like that. Just get out there. Um, and you can you can spend months just doing nothing but documentation fixes and become one of the highest contributors to Rails, sort of thing, you know what I mean? You don't have to do that, but I'm just giving you an example. You don't have to be an awesome Ruby programmer to contribute to this community. You just have to care on what I care. So the reason I'm giving this little talk is because she made me. But other than that, <laughs> it's because the Ruby community is really big and there's lots of information out there. Um, I mean, there's lots of information out there. Um, by the way, I've got these as a PDF, so if you want them afterwards, Chloe's got it and she can send it to you. Um, and the amount of information out there is mind-blowing. And it's actually the reason why we have things like general assembly courses and we have our install fests and all these other activities that we do. Because unlike other languages like um, .NET or iOS or, no, it's not language, but Objective C, um, or maybe, you know, Java, for example, if you want to learn how to program in one of those languages, where do you go if you wanted to start learning Java? You go to the Sun or Oracle website, right? If you want to learn Objective-C, you go to the Apple website. If you want to learn .NET, you go to the Microsoft website. There are canonical sources of absolute authority on those languages, and there's only one source, right? Ruby's not like that. Everyone who feels like making a tutorial can make one. So you go out and go, how do I fix my routing file? And you get a thousand blogs that you can read, none of them which actually answer your question, because they're all talking about different things, right? And by the end of it, you're just going, Ruby! You know, and screaming, <laughs> climbing up the wall and throwing little spitballs at your teacher. Uh, um, but that's the problem, right? It's cool, but it's a problem. Because there's no way to know which blog I need to talk to or which blog I need to read to actually get the job done. So that's sort of why I'm giving this talk. I want to give you a few sort of guidelines. Why are you doing the course while you're here? Obviously, ask her. Right. She's going to put you on the right track. She knows what the hell she's talking about. She'll be able to direct you in the right direction. But if you're working out of hours and stuff, well, what do you do? Well, we really like newbies in Ruby. I mean, we really like them. So Ruby AU is um, Ruby Australia. It's the governing body of all Ruby activities in Australia. Um, it's probably one of the most profitable and cashed up non-profit associations I have anything to do with. It's amazing. The amount of support that comes into the Ruby community is amazing. So we put on conferences and all sorts of things. Chloe and I um, run the Ruby on Rails and Storefest and also Development Hub. In Storefest would be a bit low tech for you guys because you already passed that. But Development Hub happens every month <coughs> and it's free. And um, what we do in Storefest is we basically get someone who's never touched Ruby or Rails, doesn't even have Ruby installed on their computer, has never done any programming, and they start at 6.30, and by 9.30, they have a blog online on the internet working with Ruby Ruby Rails. And it's, it's a free thing we do every week, every month. 
Oh, by the way, next month, it's every week. Please. Whack that down in your diary. Um, it's something we do every month, and it's sold out every month. I think we've put 250 people through it now in the past six months. It's just amazing. So the demand is huge. So we do that, but then people were finishing that and going, well, what's next? So then we started doing Development Hub. So these are both the interactive initiatives. And Development Hub is on next Tuesday night at 9 o'clock, um, which is just on the other side of the Piedmont Bridge. It's also free. And you just come along and you sit down and you can just code on whatever you're working on. It can be the project that you're doing here, it can be your homework assignment, it can be some open source work you want to do. Basically what happens is we have a room of people. Um, last month I think there were 60 um, people that rocked up. And out of that 60 there are about 10 or 12 professional Rails developers who just come along with no payment just to help, right? Which is pretty unreal when you think about it. Um, all of my staff pretty much go that are in, in Sydney, because my staff is scattered around Australia. But we hold that every month as well, and that's really popular. Then there's also Rails Girls, which is obviously targeted at one half of the gender equation. I'll let you guess which one it is. Um, but that's really important, because um, one of the things that happens is that there is a gender bias in the technology industry away from women and towards men. I mean, it, that's the way it is currently. So what Rails Girls is trying to address is that gender bias making a safe place that um, ladies that want to learn about Rails and programming can just come along and learn. Um, it's open to anybody. And we have, that's a similar size thing, you know, 40, 50 people come to that with 10, 10 to 15 professional developers there to help out. So these are just some of the things that we do in Sydney, for example, uh, to help new people get along. So to give you an example, there's some photos from our install fest. I mean, there's a lot. And all sorts of people, lots of smiling faces, and that feeling of, oh my god, I'm a bit like a dog because I've created this app and it works and it's doing what I say, and I am the master. And you get all sorts of fun reactions at the install fest. <laughs> but, the, <laughs> but the reason I tell you about this is that don't be afraid to come along if you're brand new. Because we're like we're so used to it. You know, I'll be chatting at, at um, one of the Events and I'll turn to someone and say, So, what have you done in Rails? I say, oh, I just walked in. This is, yeah, cool, come and learn. Oh, okay. You know, and it works like that. We actually had three people at the install fest who just happened to be in the room when we came in to set up. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this was just two nights ago. And two of them went, Actually, this looks pretty cool. And they just stayed and did the install fest, which there you go. So, anybody can do it. I've had CEOs come along, which are like the worst programmers ever, because um, I think they know everything, right? And I've had baggage handlers from Sydney Airport come along. I've had pharmacists. I've had a single mum trying to change her career. We've had everything. So we're very newbie friendly, which is really cool for you guys, because you can ask lots of questions and no one really cares, as long as you're willing to help when you can, you know? So the expectation is we'll help the crap out of you, but you're going to get back when you get to the point that you can, you know, and that's how the community grows. So some of the online things, again, don't bother taking notes, just ask Chloe at the end and she'll send you a PDF. Um, we've got the RoRo, RoRo stands for Ruby on Rails Oceana. It also stands for Ruby for Rails Oceana, and there's a religious war going on right now trying to decide which one it is, but it works for both. Um, that's a Google group. Lots of questions get asked there. It tends to be a little bit more on the technical side and high-end side, because most of the people posting on that group are pretty accomplished Rails developers. Um, but sometimes if there's a really complex question there, it's worth just trying to follow the conversation and you'll get more understanding of it. Um, there's Twitter, Ruby Australia, and Rails Camp. Rails Camp's quite unique to Australia. Um, most other countries go, we'll hire an event space and we'll have a conference and it'll be all structured and have lots of talk. Down here in Australia, we go to ask for a grab a tent, we'll pop out the back of Earth, we'll just set up and drink and code. Um, and that's what Rails Camp is. It's evolved, it's a bit more formal now, but not much more than that. Um, it's basically a group of, I think the last one was 150 programmers to centre on a YMCA camp and just uh, played card games, programmed, drank really good coffee because we hire a fully kitted out barista to come along and um, And just did various things. And you get some people working on Ruby, other people working on some other language, JavaScript, or they're doing their open source project or whatever. It's totally an 
fun conference, if you like. Um, it's actually become so successful that they now do it all over the world, not to prove it straight for other people copying them, which is great. I think last year we held one in the slopes of Sun Mountain in New Zealand, which was pretty awesome. Ruby Roads is a, um, well, these. These ones here are like getting more help. There's Pair With Me, which is the idea of pair programming. You can just find someone to help you out on the programming side. And then you've got IRC channels. I don't know if you guys use IRC channels, but that's also a good avenue for getting help. You can just ask a question and get it done. Obviously, also there's Stack Overflow and all these other things, which you probably already know about, so I haven't put on the slides, but I'm talking through it here. In terms of um, what we've got happening in Sydney, we've got the Sydney Ruby Meetup, Rover Sydney, second Tuesday of every month. Uh, the next meetup is not Tuesday the 12th of November 2013. The next meetup is next month, second Tuesday, whatever that is. It's the 11th. It's the 11th, okay. Yeah, yeah sounds right. Um, so 11th of February is the next meetup. That's held in a pub. Um, again, this is a genius of the Ruby community. Um, it used to be held in an office, and we hold the meetup, and then everyone would go to a pub. And someone said, "Why not just remove the middleman? Just start the pub. Um, you don't have to drink. I actually don't drink alcohol, so don't feel bad if you go along and you don't feel like to drink alcohol. Um, but it's in the reason it's cool in that space is because we get the whole top floor of the Trinity pub, and it's got little breakout spaces and different areas you can chat, and there's a big screen where we can do presentations." And it's a good place to go and meet potential employers um, and just talk to people, you know? So that's really good. Definitely go to that. If you're interested in getting into Rails, start attending that meeting every month. It's like pretty critical. Out of all the things, I'd say do that the most. Mainly because you'll just start associating with Ruby developers. And if you associate with Ruby developers, you'll get ideas. Or you'll see someone giving some talk about the latest CSS framework and you go, actually, I know about that. And you'll be able to contribute or do something, right? SIBJS is about JavaScript, not really only Rails, obviously, but sometimes they have Rails related talks because Rails does a lot of JavaScript. Um, that's the week after Roro Sydney on the Wednesday. So it's the same night as Development Hub. No, it's the opposite. Anyway, whatever. It's the week after Roro Sydney. Port 80 is a web based, um, everything to do with the web. So you might or might not know that the HTTP protocol goes over port 80 on your computer. If you don't know what that is, that's fine. You can still attend the meetup. Um, but that's everything to do with the web in general and another good place to just start attending. All of these events are free, by the way. Um, Geek breakfast, second Friday of the month at Tankstream. Warning, no breakfast is served. So I don't know why they call it Geek breakfast, but you don't actually get breakfast. So it's probably just called geek, would be a better way to say it. Geek before breakfast or geek after breakfast might be more accurate, um, but this has been a common problem. And then the Rails Oceana Sydney Meetup Group, which is meant uh, basically run by Chloe and Sheila Sutter, and many of you people might already be involved with that. Um, another place where we announce things about Roro Sydney, the Install Fest Development Hub, we just keep that up to date so you know when things are coming up. Then we have some national events. Uh, we've got Rails Camp. We've had 15 in Australia since 2007. We basically call a Rails Camp every six months or so. And again, very newbie friendly. Just go, you know, and play with your Rails apps. It's a great excuse to get out of the city for two days. Sometimes they're held in locations where there is no internet, which is sort of on purpose, because it makes you learn Ruby, right? So, um, but usually 3G works, this Telstra and Honda is uh, very clever. But anyway, um, RubyConf AU, which is next month, that's being held at Luna Park. Awesome. Um, go, definitely go. Your only excuse not to go to that is we're not in Australia, which is what my excuse is. So, other than that, because uh, I won't be here for that, which really sucks, I have conference at go. But um, definitely go to RubyConf. There's actually, there might still be some student tickets available if you're a full-time student or a student, so you should go to the website and look it up. Um, but very valuable for you to go to that. You're going to mix up with a lot of people. You're going to go to talks which go right over the top of your head on some of them, and some of them they won't. But you'll be able to start getting some feel for the whole community. Um, and really, it's just across the bridge. So if you can make it, definitely go. There's currently a special offer for that, but I think you get 50 bucks off. 
Yeah, good. So if you can go, definitely try and get there. Rails Girls, there'll be another one in Sydney in 2014, I'm sure. Install and Development Hub, that they're the ones that the interactive created. They're ongoing. Um, it's actually quite interesting, after a little while of going to development help, you might actually be able to come to install fest as a mentor and probably other people get their laptops set up, um, which is a great way to work because you start having to explain things to other people why stuff works. Um, like, I had to sit down and explain to someone how a partial worked and, you know, I had to write the Ruby code if it wasn't actually a partial, what was it actually doing by rendering this array of objects, you know, and it's really good because you just have to rethink really about something. One of the best ways to learn something is to teach it or force yourself to teach it. Um, then we've got a whole bunch of international events. We've got RubyConf in America, the EuroConf, um, the Japanese conference, we've got RailsConf, which travels around the world, and many, 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 many more. If you want to go to Ruby conferences, there's no shortage of Ruby conferences. You can basically leave a stay on an aeroplane and go from RubyConf to RubyConf as well. And you probably would not stay in any one city for more than a day or two after the conference. I mean, it really is great. There is so much activity happening in Ruby. In fact, um, someone did a. Someone was thinking that the Ruby uh, take up was slowing down because some of the cool kids that used to post about Ruby aren't really posting about Ruby anymore. Like they've now got jobs and they're now doing things. They're no longer trying to make themselves famous. So he did this analysis of every commit to GitHub against Ruby code. And he found that over the last six years, it's on a trend like this, and it's still going on, um, which is really interesting. So there's a lot of activity in the community about it. I'm going through these fairly fast because I sort of want to have a bunch of time at the end for you to ask any question you want, be it community related or not. So if you do, start thinking about something. I don't want to be at the end because I don't want to have you guys. No, no, that's not an option. So someone has to ask a question at the end, just letting you know. So some helpful hints. Um, Again, we can give you the PDF on these. RubyLang.org um, has a lot of documentation about the Ruby programming language. One of the really hard things about Rails is that a lot of people try and learn Rails. You can't really. Rails is like a set of idioms on top of a language. Right? So when you're learning English, and my English is a second language, friends will know what I'm talking about. You can learn every word there is in English, and you can walk down the street of Sydney and have no idea what the hell is going on, right? Because people go, get a map. You go, what word is that? <laughs> I'm not your wife. You know, how does that even work? And because there's all these idioms that we use, you know. Um, and what Ruby is, is a language. And Ruby is a language on how you instruct a program, a computer, how to do something. Rails, if you like, is a set of idioms and common patterns that you use to develop a web app. So if you don't understand Ruby, you're going to have a hell of a time understanding the idioms of Rails. It'd be like trying to learn all the Australian slang without having learned any English. Right? That, you just wouldn't do that, right? So while going in onto Rails and starting to learn Rails and getting going is useful, and you'll get a lot, like you'll get stuff out of it, your ability to learn Rails will skyrocket if you spend a little bit of time outside of class learning Ruby. And one of the really cool ways to do that is a thing called the Ruby Tomes. And what they are is a series of little practice drills that you do. And the, the program itself tells you if you've passed or not. So basically what you do is you get a Ruby file, which is called number one or something, and you run that Ruby file, and it prints output to your terminal and says, you have yet to achieve this level of mastery. And it says, to achieve this level of mastery, you make one equal one. And you go, what do you mean? Then you open up the file, and it, it has two equals one. You go, oh, I'll change the one to two to a one. You run, yes, it's passed. So then that's taught you how to use the equals operator, right? And then everyone after that gets more and more and more and more and more complex. And a couple of them even had me like down this chain going, how do I, um, how do, I do that? You know, having to sit down and actually figure it out, which is really cool. So it's a way to practice Ruby. The Rails tutorial website is also very good, although trying to do that at the same time as doing the deep dive here might be a bit confusing. Um, Ruby programming online. So this book is online and free. It's the first version of the book, and it teaches you the basics about Ruby. And everything in that still applies, even to modern versions of Ruby. So 
even if you can't buy, afford to buy the programming review book at this point, just going through page by page on that whole website and reading the whole thing will teach you a lot about Ruby. And that's actually the only thing I had when I wrote the mail library, was that book. Um, so I just read that book online and I just kept reading it until I really got it and then I started programming Ruby on the mail library. The Rails guides, if you ever have any questions about how Rails works, they're the best, they're the closest thing we've got to a canonical single source on the Rails stack. And they're exceptionally good. Um, they cover a lot of data. Again, if you are going through the Rails guide and you get confused on something, you have a recommendation to update it, you can commit the change and fix it. It's all open source. You just send in a request and say, I want to update this part of the docs, and they'll log you for it. Um, and then the install test blog series is what we use with install test. That's a series of blogs that walks you through how to create a blog online. Um, again, probably wait till after you've done the deep dive before you try something like that because you don't want to get too confused. But there are a lot of things out there that you can use. Alright. So I've kept that to half an hour that I wanted to. But it does mean we've got some time to chat and ask questions or go blue or whatever. So are there any questions? Remember there's one option if there are no questions.